guy. Hey, man, you're looking how great. Yeah. Omaha oh, must be good for you. I... Hey, how come you keep looking younger and the rest of us older? Well, uh, the Lord works his magic in strange ways sometimes. We're going to be neighbors. I'm getting transferred to March Air Force Base. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah. How's the expectant groom? Normally nervous, Garth. Linda's flying in tomorrow. How's my best man? I'm looking forward to a first-class Air Force wedding performed by my favorite chaplain. <laughs> so this is Lassie, huh? Hello, girl. Hey. I understand you're quite an addition to the Holden Ranch, girl. Boy, she's everything you said, Garth. Listen, I have to go on duty at the Launch Control Center in a little while. Why don't I pick up my deputy and we'll give you and the chaplain a little tour of the base. Great. Captain Lindsay, security. General, my security people are on their stations. Oh, fine, Captain. My deputy, Dave Winton. Hi. Hello, Dave. How Captain are you? Captain Stone. Garth Holden, my foster father. Hello, Hi. Dave. How do you do? And that's Lassie. There's about to be a Minuteman launch, Garth. We can watch it from a viewpoint down by the beach. Oh. You mean have time to watch the launch uh, before you go back to the control center? Oh, plenty, sir. We don't have to go down the capsule until 1500. Good. <laughs> There's security on every road leading to Minuteman Beach to enforce the safety zone. This is as close as anybody gets down here, and Dave will get us cleared for the viewpoint. Lieutenant Winton, I have permission to go up to the observation site. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad this missile's coming out of LF-26 and not our bird. LF? That's launch facility. Yes, sir. Our missile is in LF-09. Can't blame Lassie for wanting a front row view, too, huh? <laughs> Thank you. 
That chopper makes sure that the beach is clear. Now, once it moves out, then the bird is launched. How do you figure the combat crew on LF-26 feel right now, Pat? That's what we're all trained for, Dave. 11 seconds and counting. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. As a deterrent, uh, against aggression. And with God's help, we'll never see anything more than a test firing. Let's go. That's where our bird's sitting. And sitting. And sitting. Almost a month now since we came out from Dakota. It's not like we mind, though. You know, any idle time we have in the capsule, we're both studying for our masters. Right. Courtesy right. of Uncle Sam. Right. <laughs> well, I better get you back to the chapel. Uh, Dave and I have to report for a pre-alert briefing. We'll see you in about 24 hours. <laughs> Easy, Lassie. The excitement's <laughs> over for today. I got a whole 72 hours for my honeymoon. I'll start the wedding countdown now. <laughs> Go. Come on, girl. She's gonna be home for a day or two. Then we get Pat married. She'll be fine here in the backyard. Besides, they don't allow dogs to run loose on the base anyway. Sure appreciate your putting us up, Ken. I have to thank Colonel Griffith. He's on leave, and he was nice enough to let us use his quarters. Lassie doesn't take much defenses. 
She likes the wide open spaces. Well, I can't say I can blame her much for that. Here, let me take your things. How does the barbecue in the backyard sound? Oh, it's great. Good. Things are going so well at the ranch for you, Garth. Thanks, Ken. You must be very proud of what you've done there and what you're doing. It never would have been a reality without your help, Ken. My efforts were small compared to yours. Tell me, how are the boys? Oh, they're great. Ron and Dale are both back in college, doing just fine. Tell me about this transfer. That's something important. I'm very excited about it. It's a program working with children at March Air Force Base. CHAP. It's called Children Have a Potential. Kind of sounds like a, a Garth Holden program, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ken, you've been in the Air Force how long now? About 15? 16 years in November. Looking back, do you have any regrets? No. None at all. As a matter of fact, it's, it's been a good life, an honest life. I've met a lot of fine young men, and hopefully I've helped some of them. The spirit does need a lot of help sometimes, doesn't it? That's why I'm here. Let's get to the changeover checklist, okay? The launch on LFO-9 has been moved up. You can expect launch command within the next two hours. Get your people out. Yes, sir. Let's get to work, gentlemen. Guard! LFO-9 goes within two hours. We've been invited to watch from the command post. General Davis knows that we're friends of Pat's. That sounds great. Let me get changed. Right. Facility 09, where the missile is in its silo. Now, the launch control center where Captain Hayes and his deputy are on duty is here, several miles away. And here at the battle staff headquarters, 
We monitor all systems. General Davis, sir. Ah, uh, Chaplain. General, how are you, sir? Mr. Holden. Glad you could be here. Glad to be invited, yeah. General. The young friend Captain Hayes doesn't know it yet, but his big moment is coming soon. Show them the command post, Captain. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. When that red telephone rings, we're go for launch. But Captain Hayes and Lieutenant Winton won't get the word until a few minutes before the test. In actual emergency conditions, it could be as little as 30 seconds. Now, we've got two television cameras on the launch site. The other screens give us downrange weather and telemetry data. That red bank of lights out there monitors all the systems. When we get a complete green range, we're ready for launch. Security patrol's on the way, sir. The chopper is in the air. Yes, sir. We have a green range. Yes, sir. We have a green range. We are clear to launch. We have a goal for launch.
in a minute, 20 seconds and counting. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Launch the inserted commander. Three, two, one, one minute. This is a range control officer. We have a red range. Roger. Standing by. We have threatening weather in the terminal area. They cannot score the vehicle. I've requested a count hold. How long? It's indefinite, sir. All right. We'll plan on a one-hour hold. Yes, sir. Notify Omaha we're on hold and recycling. <laughs> Launch director, this is C-0. We have picked up an OZ. There has been an outer zone security breach at LF-09. General, there's a dog out there. Lassie. Well, that's my colleague. Get your security people out there fast. Security alert, LF-09, move. <laughs> Snow Goose. And these are her eggs. Snow Goose? Isn't that unusual for this area? Probably got blown off course. She had no choice but to sit down. You're almost ready to hatch. How soon do you think? Well, it's hard to tell. If we move the nest before they hatch, the goose will abandon them. How long will that weather hold last? No telling, sir. Could be the hour, but sometimes they go on and on. I'd better notify command post of the situation. Well, there might be enough time. We'd better move out, Ken. And hope that bird will come back to her nest. No, sir, Mr. Holden can't be for certain. It's just a guess. We're still on an extended hold, Captain. There's no report of weather clearing yet downrange. You stand by out there. Yes, sir. Well, we have a little time, gentlemen. Let's just pray the weather stays on our side.
quite a way to spend a day before your wedding. Yeah, great bachelor party. Well, I hope that little bird does its thing before the big one has to. Target area reports weather clearing. Stand by for authorization to launch. General, target area reports weather is clear to resume countdown. Gentlemen are running out of launch window time. Clear launch facility 09, resume tactical countdown. Affirmative, sir. Right away. Captain! It's happening! Snow Goose made it, sir. The eggs are hatching. Gentlemen, the men of the Strategic Air Command have just become adopted fathers to a nest of baby snow geese. Come on, little mother. Yeah. We'll move you all to a safe. Darth, I told you about that children's program I'm going to be working on at March Air Force Base soon. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if it'd be possible if I could take Lassie with me for a while. She'd be a great help with those children. I think she'd like that. I know the boys would, too. Hey, we've got a wedding to launch, remember? Let's go. Approaching Omaha now, uh, Chaplin, if you'll look out the left window there, you'll see an interesting sight. It's a mid-air refueling.
will be estimating touchdown at off at that zero eight hundred. Chaplain, General Raymond is waiting for you down in the battle camp. Fine, we came straight from the plane. Good. Thank you, Sergeant Sharp. Come on, Joe. And as the lieutenant at the console on your right has just demonstrated, we have instant communications with strategic air command bases throughout the world. Now, if I may direct your attention to the center screen. This is Looking Glass, our airborne command post, so-called because it is a mirror image of what you see right here. On eight-hour shifts, one of these planes is in the air at all times, 24 hours a day, year in and year out. An Air Force general is in command of each shift, and his staff is equipped to do everything that we can do here in the underground command post. Looking Glass constantly stands ready to assume control of all SAC's functions, should our underground facilities ever become inoperative. Now, if our visitors will accompany Colonel Elias to the screening room, we have some film prepared for you to show you our SAC bases all over the world. Thank you. General, the chaplain is here. Oh, chaplain? Gentlemen, if you'll follow me, please. Sorry to keep you waiting. Sir. All right, sir. The word of thanks and good luck on your new assignment. I wanted you to have my personal wishes before you left. Well, I appreciate that, sir. We'll miss you, chaplain. But our loss is March's gain. So again, my personal thanks. I appreciate that, sir. Oh, um, a new convert? Not hardly. As a matter of fact, I'm learning from her. Mm. We can all learn from someone, Chaplain. Yes, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Jones. Thanks, sir. You sure I'm not imposing? Nonsense. Donna and Ellie won't be back till the weekend. Just me and Sparky. The house is yours. I should have everything cleared up in a couple of days. Well, however long it takes. You know, I'm going to miss seeing the girls, especially my favorite little gal. Yeah, they will too. Well, I see, Lassie's going to be good company for Sparky. I'm glad you got permission to bring her with you. All right, come on, Sparky. Time for your shot. <laughs> It's a regular routine, 10 o'clock every morning. It's not easy being diabetic. Yeah, well, the insulin's necessary. I think Sparky knows it. He just likes to play little games with me. Still now, this won't take a second. There you go. Okay, Sparky, that's it for today. <laughs> Every 24 hours, but it's worth it. We all love the little rascal, and the injections keep him alive. Well, you, uh, 
uh, spoke before about imposing. How about I impose on you? Sure. Well, I've got looking glass duty tomorrow morning. I have to leave early for a briefing. Could you take Sparky over to the base vet for me around 10 for his insulin injection? Be glad to. You can use my car. I have a driver's picking me up. No problem. Well, I've done my doctor's duty. How about a little breakfast before you go to work? Would you think me sacrilegious if I said, oh, man? <laughs> I see your identification, sir. Major Dean and Looking Glass Battle Staff reporting for eight-hour duty. Thank you, sir. Have a good flight. Thank you, Sergeant. Take her back to the guard shack, will you, Peck?
I've come for the collie, Sergeant. Yes, sir. It seemed like he was trying to get aboard Looking Glass. You didn't see a white poodle, did you? No, sir. Could that poodle have gotten aboard the airplane? Well, I don't know, sir. It's not likely. But if he did, then there's nothing we can do about it, sir. Because that plane is committed to an eight-hour flight. <laughs> Contact the command post. Alert them to the possibility of a K-9 stowaway on Looking Glass. Yes, sir. Affirmative. Please start a search immediately, Colonel Cameron. Will do. <sighs> sir. Excuse me, I just got a communication from headquarters. Uh, uh, there's a possibility that my little dog is aboard. Your dog, Colonel? Yes, sir. Uh, well, permission to search? <laughs> Granted. something you are. You got a mask for this? You found our little stowaway, Colonel. Sorry, sir. I didn't know he was aboard. <laughs> Cute little guy. His name's Sparky. Uh, you just settle him down someplace. He'll have to make the best of the remainder of our mission. Yes, sir. Yeah, Command, uh, this is Colonel Cameron. I'm aboard Looking Glass. Put me in touch with Chaplain Kenneth Stone, please. Oh, sir. Little Cameron. Gene? Yeah, Ken, uh, did Sparky get his insulin shot? No, Gene, he didn't. He ran away from the vets. Uh, but have communication switch me to the base veterinary services. Right. He wants to talk to the base vet. If he doesn't, if he goes into a coma, is there anything I can do? Without insulin, Gene, you can't do anything. Just hope that his metabolic balance remains stable and that he doesn't go into a diabetic coma. I can't thank you.
four hours to go, Chaplain. We're halfway there. Chaplain, want to take coffee break? I'll let you know if there's any change. Thanks, Major. Um, stay. Baby, stay awake. Come on, Sparky, hang on. Colonel? Sorry, Colonel. There's very little we can do, but I'll have command notified of the situation. Thank you. Yes, sir, I understand. General Raymond, well, he's in the staff meeting, sir. Yes, sir, I'll report the status to him. Sparky's going into a coma. Got over two hours left up there. I'm going up to General Raymond's office. Maybe, just maybe, I'll get in to see him and he'll have a suggestion. Come to Stanley, take over, will you please? Keep your fingers crossed, Chaplain. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I guess you have another way of doing it. I crossed my toes. <laughs> Sparky, just a little while longer. Hang on. General Raymond has just talked with the Department of Defense. They've got permission to bring Looking Glass down early. They've alerted another aircraft to take over. How soon? Oh. Another 20 minutes at the most. Captain Moore is standing by, and he'll have the insulin package with him. The looking Glass will be landing on runway 27, and you're to meet him there at Pride Hangar. Thank you, Major. I'll pass the word on to Colonel Cameron.
Quite a day, huh, Gene? Unforgettable, Ken. While I was at the command post this morning, my final orders came through. Lassie and I'll be headed back to California on the courier first thing tomorrow morning. Well, we'll miss you. We'll both miss you. Likewise. Matt Taylor, CHAP director. Welcome to March. Ken Stone, Matt. Nice to be here. And this is Lassie. Uh, well, I'm glad we'll be working together. I'm sure Lassie will be a big help. That's why I brought her along, Matt. She's very special. Yes, yeah, so I've heard. Have you been briefed on our CHAP program here? Yes, I have. Uh, you'll be challenged daily, Chaplin. Some of these kids are pretty badly handicapped. Emotional, mental, physical. Well, I, I believe in the program and what it stands for. All children have a potential. You and I are going to get along just beautifully. If you're not in a hurry to get set up in your quarters, I'd like to make a stop first, introduce you to some people. Fine. It's visiting time over at the B-52 alert facility. Our immediate problem at the moment is a young lad by the name of Jimmy Fredericks. He wears a leg brace. His big dream is becoming a pilot like his father. Fredericks is aircraft commander on one of the B-52s. The doctors don't give the boy much hope. He 
just can't adjust to it. He's failing in school. What's more important, and this is where you come in, he's rejected religion. He won't go to church anymore. He says if there were a god, he wouldn't be crippled. Chaplain Ken Stone, Jim Fredericks. Hello, Jim. How do you do? And his wife, Gail. Hello, Gail. And Jimmy Jr. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. Ken will be helping me with the CHAP program. Her name is Lassie, Jimmy. Sure, Jimmy. Be careful, huh? Okay. Jimmy, why don't you take Lassie with you? She needs some exercise. Hey, that would be swell. Come on, Lassie. Keep it right with you, Jimmy. Don't let her run loose, huh? Okay.
Vanessa, you can be my co-pilot. This is just like a real B-52 cockpit. Reno 1 1, this is Reno Control. Tower reports are clear to taxi. Roger. Speed indicates 250. Mach meter indicates 077. True airspeed 444 knots.
I'll start your yard power. Reno Control, this is Reno 1-1. One, one. Check the circuit breakers. Anything positive? Last one, Jim. Break out the emergency radio car. Reno Control, we're transmitting 2430. Uh, Reno 1 1, this is Reno Control. Read you loud and clear. What's the problem? We've lost TR power. Without TR, you can't switch fuel tanks. What's your status? I'd estimate we have about 45 minutes left. Then we'll have to come down. And without TR power, you can't get your landing gear down. Have you checked the circuit breakers? Yes, sir. And we're checking the TR units in the wheel well. Up to now, it's all negative. Now keep working on it. We'll get maintenance on the line and see if they can work out something. Meanwhile, I'll put fuel emergency on alert. If you don't get TR power back, Captain, you're going to have to come in for a gully landing. Any other suggestions, Jim? You just keep trying to trace that power loss down. We've got close to 45 minutes left. Then, if everything is still negative, we come down. Hard. Control. This is Reno 1-1. One, one. Negative on the last check. What's your kill situation now? With all the gauges inoperative, I can only guess, but I'd estimate about 15 minutes. Uh, Captain, remain in your holding pattern at uh, flight level 270. We'll be laying foam on runway 31 right. If we don't get that TR problem solved within the next eight minutes, we're bringing you down. Reno 1-1. One, one. Roger. Hi, Jimmy. Have a nice morning? Yes, sir. You know, I'm sorry you missed my first service. I worked pretty darn hard on that sermon. Yes, sir. Well, I better get going now. Thanks for letting me take Lassie. Jimmy. Sit down for a minute, will you? You know, Jimmy, there's a lot of people that have far worse handicaps than yours. At least you have your mind. But you have to let God help you. Trust in him. If there really is a God, then why'd he make me this way? Are you saying, if only you were whole, you believe? I don't know. Because you know, Jimmy, the easiest thing in the world for people to say is, quote, if only. But only God can say what's going to be.
of the ORI's in trouble. Lock landing gear. Got to make an emergency landing. And like in your case, you're going to have to develop your resources from inside. And the way science is progressing these days, there's a good chance that you can be a pilot like your father. But, Jimmy, you have to believe in God. You have to trust him. Hello? Chaplain. I'll be right back. Thank you, Sergeant. Hello? Oh, Gail. Yes, hello. He's right here with me now. I just talked to Wing Command. Jim's plane is in trouble, and they're going to have to make a belly landing. I'll be on the observation deck at Wing Command. Can you keep Jimmy with you? There's no point in him knowing, not yet. Oh, yes, yes, of course, I'll do what I can. Yeah. All right, fine. Yes, Jimmy, it is. His plane's in trouble. Where's my mom? At the wing command. I want to go there. She'll need me. We'll go together. Come on. How bad is it? I don't really know. We'll get out there as soon as we can. pilot in the whole world. He just knew, Gail. Reno 1-1, this is Reno Control. Runway 3-1 right is foamed and ready. You're clear to commence penetration and approach. Visibility good. We we'll start penetration three miles. Some four to five. 
possibility still good. Reports are clear for emergency landing. And good luck. This is Reno 1-1. We've got TR power. Landing gear is down. Hey, good news, Reno 1-1. You're now clear to land on runway 31 left. Yes, sir. We're coming home. God, you're safe. I said a lot of prayers up there, honey. I guess you did, too. You know, it was really strange. We would lost TR power. Couldn't get anything to work. And all of a sudden, got power back. I guess all those prayers worked, didn't they, Jeff? Prayers, miracles. There's only one thing I know for sure, Captain. God is with us always.
leave, Chaplain. Will you help me? But you've already done the most important part. You've opened the door to God. Thank you.